Question mark. Hallelujah. The craziest yeah. part of all this is when you actually stop and look at the story, there really isn't a need for FNAF 6. Outside of the return of Springtrap cliffhanger and revealing what's inside the box, yeah, remember that, everything else pretty much has an answer. Sure, there are still parts of the tale that could be more fleshed out, like the origins of the puppet or what happens after Eddard gets ejected from Mike, but at this point, all the characters have completed their story arcs. The family is reunited and the spirits are all at peace. It's actually pretty poetic. It took nearly 20 theories and literally weeks of my life studying these breadcrumbs to get there, but we did it. We got to a solution that fit together practically all of the loose ends, and that's pretty darn special. Thank you for being a part of that. You're making me cry. This video was good. After this, we're gonna go watch Anyone something else. Been an incredible ride. I have no doubt that this isn't a hundred percent correct, but you know what? It's an explanation I'm happy with. One that I feel provides a sense of closure to the series, and one that I'm gonna let stand as my final word on the five games worth of series lore until a new installment. <laughs> Crap! A new installment that just so happened to get teased immediately after last week's part one. Scott, don't go getting predictable on me. Calling it now just so I can avoid the inevitable prediction theory. It's an installment that looks like it's gonna be taking yet another step back in the timeline to tell the origin stories of the puppet. Notice how the sprites are the exact same as the FNAF 2 Give Cake mini games where the first child gets. Yeah, it's true. I actually found out what happened to Puppet. He was actually a security puppet, okay? And he was trapped because the kids put some type of present on his present so he couldn't get out of the box. And when he got out the box, it was too late. The girl got kidnapped. So you basically know what the story is now. Now that I said that, the puppet was actually a security puppet. He was a security... He was security also. Murdered and the puppet pops out of the screen. Also notice that the rainbow design is a direct callback to the aesthetic of 70s technology, which is when Fredbear Family Diner and the first murder would take place. Lastly, the source code on Scott Games keeps saying, what is paragraph four? Well, paragraph four could be relating to a lot of things, but the one thing that jumps out at me is that as soon as my episode went up, this teaser came out. Paragraph four of my episode last week happened to be about William Afton's first Murders. But before I end all this, let me give the hardest of hardcore fans one more deep dive on the whole Will Trap versus Mike Trap debate. Let's speed it up. Most hardcore fans believe Mike is the purple guy currently in the Springtrap suit, and it's easy to see why. His voice is modified with an electronic effect in the custom night ending. Springtrap pops up at the end of Mike's final words. And the purple guy sprite who ends up in the suit is seen releasing kids from their animatronics. However, these are easily explained away. We've heard Springtrap talk before, or should I say gurgle before in FNAF 3. And Mike's voice is very different from Springtrap. Springtrap popping up on I'm going to come find you could very easily just be a visual storytelling element where Mike is stating his mission to track his father down. We visually see that he did it, but oh no, cliffhanger, dad ain't dead. And we already talked about how- Oh, dad ain't dead. But still, now I really loved the puppet, but I loved when he had a security. Like, I loved when he, you know, was security. Like, he had this little thing on his head, and I liked it. It does it. I know, you're like, really? Really? It's just a hat, but it looks adorable on him, and then I love Puppet now. Like, more than I used to. Based on the order of events, William inside Springtrap is undeniable. Whoever is working as Nightguard and Casper Bright can't just be... I'm gonna go show you that... Man, guy off the street, it's someone who has seen both the fat one and fat two. I'm gonna show you that Puppet... the. Yeah, the puppet mini game in Final Fantasy VI, and you will be like, it makes sense. The whole entire story makes sense now. This is the end.
It's like we're a truly spring trap. That would mean he never would have had the opportunity to get suit and turn purples and Circus Baby's rentals wouldn't have opened at that point. And he would have been trapped in the balls of the FNAF 1 location in the spring trap suit. Lastly, it's like we're a spring trap and who set fire to Fazbear Fright? I guarantee that fire was intentional. It was meant to finish off the last awful pieces of Freddy's legacy. And Mike's really the only one possessing that sort of motive. William is the established killer who would be cocky thinking that he got away from the spirits by hiding in his golden body suit, which seems very counter to how Mike behaves. Oh yeah, and let's also not forget Scott confirmed our theories on the killer being in spring trap years ago. If all of that doesn't convince you, well, I look forward to watching your research. All right, 12 pages later, I'm finally ready to close this thing out. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Now don't get mad at me when the new game comes out in a few weeks and everyone tells me to do another theory about it. Hey, and a very special thanks to Kellen Goff, the voice of Funtime Freddy, who recorded that incredible... Okay, now we're going to go show you the puppet, the security puppet that pro that was gonna check the childs, but the other childs were morons and decided to put something on his box that he was in. And so he will come out the box uh, to go check once in a while. And then he tried to check. Okay, I'm just gonna fucking show you this. Look, he's stuck. All these kids are assholes. No! Puppet! And so he has to, like, go save them. If he can't save them, then there's no point. Oh, no! So now you see he's dying! He's dying. Because it's not safe outside. What the hell? the game randomly. Wait, let's try and get that. So Lefty is basically a toy Freddy, but he's dangerous. And I guess there's a storyline for him, but you can see that the puppet's face is right in the corner. Yeah, but the puppet is right in the corner. Are you blind? Are you blind or something? Wait. Like, version of Freddy that looks completely different, and a clown. Why is there a clown back there? Is that, like... I almost feel like this is hinting at like a spin-off game or I don't know. I mean, I doubt it, but I'm just saying it's weird to see it back there. Also on the right, you get a little hint at what's to come here. You got a picture of the puppet. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's really all there is to discuss. There's also some like paper back there, but nothing really major until you look at Lefty. So you guys all know who Lefty is. He's, he's the animatronic that's missing one eye, his left eye, obviously. But if you zoom in on his, I guess his right arm, you will see that the puppet is inside of Lefty. The puppet. What? And Illuminati confirmed the puppet is in Lefty. I'm gonna have to go get Lefty now. <laughs> is inside of Lefty. Uh, what? <laughs> what? I mean, that explains so much, but like, it's it's so crazy. Cause like, if we go to our catalog here and you go to, cause we have the puppet in the game, like right here, you have the security puppet. If you if you put these side by side next to Lefty, that Lefty image and this, you'll see that's the puppet inside of Lefty. Why is he in there? That's crazy. That's insane. 
Um, also, just like taking a look at Lefty right here, you can see on this picture in his arm, he's not in him. So I don't know if like the puppet can just like go to different animatronics and get take control of whoever he wants. I mean, I guess this all makes sense now. Lefty, oh my God! Okay, that explains everything. Oh my god, that explains so many things. I don't know, it's weird. Because like in this image, you can see his arm and his legs, and they don't look like the puppets. I mean, maybe it's just the angle that they're at, but I don't know, man. It's really strange. Not only that, but the fact that Lefty is $5. <laughs> He's $5. And as you guys remember, when I played my non-salvage playthrough of the game to get that ending, the only animatronic that stayed, no matter what, that you could not throw away, that would come out regardless, was Lefty. So, I mean, it all kind of makes sense when you think about it. It's crazy to think about, though, but it, it, it makes sense. So, I just want to kind of throw that in at the beginning of this video. We have a brand new, I guess, version. I think there's six endings in this game in total. And I think we've only found four of them in total. Or three. Dang. Let me just... Now you know. The security puppet and Lefty are connected together. Basically, like a group. Still either three or two more endings that nobody has found yet. From my, you know, understanding, I don't think anyone's found them just yet. So, there's still some secrets in this game that people need to find out, and it, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be an exciting week or a few weeks until people find all the secrets. But, anyways, though, I just wanted to end the video. Like I said, you guys definitely got to check that out if you guys haven't already. I'll link to the Reddit page, by the way. In the oh wow! Okay, I'll see you next time. Bye.